Welcome to the Humboldt State University Natural History Museum. I'm Kenyon. And I'm Kanan. And today we'll be talking about the most abundant energy source on our planet. Can you guess what it is? If you guess solar energy, you'd be correct. Solar energy is an alternative energy source. That means a source of energy that doesn't burn fossil fuels to generate electricity. We'll go over what solar energy is, how it works, what the different kinds are, its pros and cons, and finally, we'll think about the future of solar energy. Now, let's dive in and find out what solar energy is. What is solar energy? Simply put, it's the light and heat that comes from the sun. And there are two main methods of collecting solar energy. The first you may be familiar with, solar panels convert solar energy into electrical currents. Or, light can be converted into solar thermal energy when it heats water to create steam power. First, let's take a closer look at how solar panels work. How do solar panels work? Sunlight excites electrons within the panels, causing them to move like they're doing a little dance. The exciting movement of the electron particles creates a current, and then this current is converted into electricity. Solar panels are a type of active solar. You are actively using technology to create electricity. You can install solar panels onto the roof of your home. With those solar panels, you would also install a solar inverter. This turns the electricity into a form that is usable for your home. Your home would also then be connected to a grid, which is a connected system of electricity controlled by one center, usually a power company. The power company will buy unused electricity from your solar panels. Therefore, over time, solar energy can save you money. Next, let's take a look at how solar thermal energy works. In an industrial solar thermal setup, first light from the sun will shine onto mirrors. The light bounces off of these mirrors onto a receiving tower that's filled with water or another liquid. This liquid then heats up into steam that's used to power a turbine, which spins to create electricity. On the left here is a diagram on how solar thermal energy can work in your own home. It can be used for heating showers, hot water for dishwashers and sinks, for your washing machines, and can even be used in your floors to heat your whole house. However, solar energy doesn't have to be technology heavy. It also includes practices that we've been using for hundreds of years in what's known as passive solar thermal energy. You can use passive solar in your own home by letting in light from windows. You can also make sure your house has south-facing windows as that's where you'll receive the most light in the northern hemisphere. Likewise, it's also important to have overhangs, movable awnings, or blinds to block the sun when you need to cool off your house. Finally, you can also place your water tank onto the roof so that the sun's light can warm it there. And of course, there are also pros and cons of solar energy. Some advantages of solar energy are, it is affordable and accessible, it creates jobs, there is no fuel burning, and sunlight is an unlimited resource. However, there are some downsides to solar energy. First of all, there are limited building resources for solar panels, and they require rare metals. Also, solar panels will eventually break, and so we need to be mindful of how we manage their waste. Industrial solar thermal can be dangerous to wildlife, as it can generate too much heat concentrated into one area. We also need to improve our battery technology for the purposes of energy storing, and finally, expansive solar projects can cause habitat loss. Here are some next steps and future solutions of solar energy. Covering water aquifers and aqueducts in solar panels. An aqueduct is like a man-made river and is used to bring water to our homes. However, the sun shining on aqueducts can cause water to evaporate. So covering aqueducts with solar panels can help prevent water loss. This is especially important in California where we often have droughts. Other questions that we need answers are, how do we create solar panels without rare earth metals? How do we recycle solar panels when they break? Are there other forms of solar energy collection? How do we make industrial solar thermal technology more animal friendly? How do we better store thermal energy in home settings? And finally, how do we make solar panels work when there's no direct sunlight? 
Thank you for joining myself and Kenyon here today at the HSU Natural History Museum. Today we learned that solar energy is the light and heat that comes from the sun. We also learned about two methods of collecting solar energy, solar panels and solar thermal. Active solar energy uses technology to harness the sun's power, while passive methods can easily be implemented into your own home. When we combine solar with other sources of renewable energy, together we can work towards a cleaner future. To learn more about other kinds of alternative energy, visit us on the web at humboldt.edu slash natmuse or in person at the HSU Natural History Museum in Arcata, California.